300 miles from the coast of Newfoundland is the Hannah boat. On the end buoy, it's still pitch black. Um, I'm a little anxious, I guess. It's uh, really important for us to get on the fish right away here. With Hurricane Igor bearing down, the rest of the fleet ran for the shelter of the docks. But Captain Greenlaw held her ground. Now, she's the only boat left on the Grand Banks, with first choice of fishing spots and a 12-hour jump on the rest of the fleet. Every pound is the difference in the paycheck right now. We'll see what happens. But finding the fish in hurricane-scrambled waters isn't easy. I'm in the warmest water around. Got my fingers crossed that today will be, uh, you know, a couple thousand pounds. Small trip on the boat. We need some good, some good sets in the next couple of days in order to make a good paycheck. But we're gonna have a small paycheck, so keep our fingers crossed. We'll catch a good fish today. Be better. Okay, here we go. I'll try it. Something there. not pulling very hard. Shark. Sharky here this morning. Two sharks, two hooks. Not a great way to start the day. Okay, these sharks are not what we wanted or needed. And we haven't seen a fish yet. But every hook is another chance to cash in. into their gear when they pulled over a thousand dollars worth of fish. Feeling good. Slamming them now. But with 35 miles of main line left to pull and still $20,000 in the hole, Captain Linda is desperate to keep the hooks coming up hot. Gotta just get started here, so hopefully keep coming. Yeah, baby. <laughs> 100 miles north, the Eagle Eye 2 is racing to get back to the fishing grounds. This afternoon, we'll get back up with the, you know, the fleet, see where everybody gets to, and go from there. Last week, just as Captain Scotty found his sweet spot, good stuff, good stuff. Hurricane Igor sent him scrambling back to shore. Crews hunkered down, there's no getting off. We're here until this wind dies down and the storm passes. Now, it'll take every bit of Scotty's 25 years of experience to get his season back on track. How about a Swanee copy? What's your water temperature? Come in. 44.13. And you got 44 degrees surface water, Roger. On the Grand Banks, the warm water of the Gulf Stream pushes up from the south and collides with the cold water of the Labrador Current. Swordfish gather on the thermocline edge where the two currents meet. It's a tough time after the storm. Now we just need this water to settle in and hopefully these fish 
show up or settle in or do something. The currents seem to be very strange, so the ocean went through a major change after the storm. It may settle in in a few days, it may not, I don't know. Below deck, the crew hasn't earned a dime in nearly a week. And tempers are getting short. To make matters worse, <coughs> deckhand Brian is sick. What's his problem? If he got up and move around, he'll feel much better. But he keeps lying down. He should be walking up and down instead of. You're a doctor, right, Daryl? No. Nope. You're a doctor? No. Oh, no, 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 okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Sorry for telling you anything. No, 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 no. no. I just, I just I'm I don't need sorry to be here. I'm telling you anything. I need to be f going. You heard what I said? I'm I stand sorry. up, I'm damn near pass out. I just said I'm Oh, idiot. I'm just trying to tell you something. You can play. You, 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 you get it, man. <laughs> That's the thing with you. I don't care what everyone tells me. I don't like being bossed around, especially by someone who's not the boss. Rub me the wrong way. That's all. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't want to listen anyway. He's young and naive, so I can't help him out, so nobody can. I'm going to lay back for a little bit. Just try to get some more rest. I know tomorrow, whenever it comes to work, he got to get up and work. Nobody will be covering for him, so that's why I said. <coughs> 1,200 miles to the south on George's banks. The Francis Ann dodged the worst of Hurricane Igor. And Captain Slick has been filling his hold. A lot of gear out. We got a lot, a lot of gear out. Get a little jump on it. Let's see what we got on the line today. Haul back number eight, fishing vessel Francis Ann. But as the haul back begins, really now, really unbelievable, man. The quarter-inch thick monofilament mainline is tangled in the boat's propeller. Now we're trying to find the main line going up around the boat. Right now, I don't see anything. I mean, nobody saw the beeper banging against the boat. Not a good start to the morning. Apparently, we drifted over our beeper buoy, and it got the main line caught in the wheel. Not my doing. Now we're all handicapped. Now we can't do nothing. Our hands are broken. Lenny? It's up to deck boss Lemmy Eastburn to dive under the boat and wrestle the main line free from the propeller. It's not good. Yep. Stay careful. Just think. Coming up. There's frustration on the deck. It could be very dangerous if someone loses their cool. And danger below the surface. Microsoft Edge Browser comes with AI tools to help you make the best purchase decision. Oh, that was easy. Let cutting edge features find you deals. How will you shop and save with Edge? Cozy night in. Oh, Laughing. <laughs> Till it hurts. <laughs> Cheesy mushroom flatbread. And an ice cold Coke. Yeah! That's my recipe for magic.
250 miles off the coast of New Jersey, the Francis Ann is at the mercy of the sea. If that gets any worse, we're screwed. We're dead in the water. We don't have any steering. Before the first beeper even hit the deck, the main line tangled in the wheel. Really now? Really. Leaving the Francis Ann dead in the water. a couple men, so tell them to stop smoking. It's not good. We got to get it out of there before we can get back underway. Yeah, hopefully it's not wrapped too many times. to free the prop without damaging the main line. Cut and pull, that's all you can do. With half the day wasted, Captain Slick is ready to haul. This looks pretty pissed off, to say the least. Work hard, try not to piss off Slick, and that's the game plan. That was a great move when I woke up this morning. I was all happy and chipper. But then I got the beeper in the wheel. Everybody ate a bowl of stupid this morning for breakfast. 1,200 miles northeast. Captain Greenlaw has pulled up nearly half of her 40 miles of gear. And hoping her early run of swords won't be the only fish she sees today. the dice and face down Hurricane Igor. Nice fish! Big fish! And now she's hit the jackpot. You know, some of these guys that went in right out the hurricane, they're not even back out fishing yet. They're missing out. We're eating their lunch. Scotty will be here tonight to make his first set. They've been, you know, at the dock thinking about coming out, I guess. The Hannah Bowden is finally on the fish. There's just one problem. Corvette. Hey, where's Kenny? I don't know. Earlier this season, fish cleaner Kenny Puttister used the slow fishing as an excuse to slack off. Some days you have light work, you don't got to do much. Now, with the fish piling up, Kenny is still missing in action. I don't know where the f Kenny is. It's all right, Harry, we can handle it. Now we're kind of used to it now. Everybody's getting kind of irritated with Kenny, myself included, you know. And it seems like Kenny works harder trying to get out of work than it does work, you know. My crew are feeling pretty frustrated with Kenny, and I understand that frustration. I mean, I, I see what's going on. You know, I, I know who's doing the work aboard here, and I know who's not doing the work aboard here. I don't want to make the situation worse than it is. I don't know if that would be possible, actually. It could be very dangerous if someone loses their cool, and I, I just really can't have it on the boat. A hundred miles away, 
Captain Chompers has finally made his way back to the fishing grounds. We're way offshore in international waters, and there's a, there's a tremendous amount of action here right now. The big eye only got in one set, worth less than $2,000, before Hurricane Igor chased him back to shore. We come here and do what we can't come to do, catch fish and go home. Now, the smallest boat in the fleet is buried under a mountain of debt and desperate to get their gear back in the water. Words for uh, Scotty and Linda and the boats that are on the bank said, uh, I guess my message to them is uh, the little boat's coming that way, and uh, hopefully the little boat can get a spot. Every boat out here is a competition to us, to each other. Well, who, who can get the most fish? As Chomps searches for the right spot to set, the last thing he wants to see is the competition just off his bow. Look, everybody. Scotty on the Eagle Eye. Yeah. Eagle Eye, too. Come on. I've got the big eye in my sights here, less than 100 yards. Talking about Chompers, he got a reputation, so I only hope he stays away from all gear. Right off my bow, he's, he's circling me. He's doing his war circle. Come on. Surrounded. Didn't read the charge. Chompers, you got everything all f***ed up already in for me. Yeah, I'm hotter and younger. Come on. It'll be me and you mixing it up with them. Come on. Working together could mean an easier time finding the fish. But Chompers has other ideas. I might get going a little bit earlier. I got a whole bunch of gear to go and get out. I want to get going early. Losing time, Howard. Yeah, I just don't think a starting ahead of me on the break here is going to work. We're going to end up together. The gear's going to move too much in this wind and tide. When captains work together, they can set lines within a quarter mile of each other. But without careful coordination and timing, wind and tides will pull their gear together. All right, then, Scott, I'll let you be. I just want to drop that on you. We fish together, it'll be all right. You know, we can both fish the edge. But if he starts, there's a good chance my gear, I'll, I'll run into his gear, and nobody wins then. Instead of cooperating with Scotty, Chompers will throw his gear in the water first and claim this spot for himself. I'm going to gamble big with my gear, and I'm going to be a leader this time unless I lead myself to poverty. That's where we're at. Throw the buoy. Three hundred miles southeast of Newfoundland is the Hannah boat. It's a nice one. It is. Nice fish. Nearly at the end of their line, Captain Linda has loaded the deck with marker swordfish. And so far, it's looking like the best set of the season. She's a great captain, uh, and this is a sign of a great captain right here. I mean, we're putting fish on the deck. By the end of the hull, they've pulled up over 3,000 pounds of swordfish. Linda is one step closer to earning her and her crew a paycheck. Good job, guys. Thank you. Fishing the Grand Banks is a risk anyway, period. I mean, you're going to get some bad weather, but, man, when the moon is right in September, you better be here. You better be putting hooks in the water. Just staying out through the storm and all the crap we've been through here is finally paying off. It's very important. We get this corner here, this best piece of water, catch some fish, it's great. Yeah, man, buddy, make money, you're happy. We got company now, though. A few miles east, Captain Scotty is steaming north for the sweet spot he abandoned during the storm only to find the Hannah Bowden 
firmly entrenched in the spot he was hoping to fish. She wiggled up to where we were fishing. It was a promising spot before this hurricane came. Yeah, it sounds like the hand of Bowden took over our spot. That was the corner. That was probably the best spot on the edge. Once again, Scotty's hoping the other captain will want to work together. Come on, Linda. keep track of them. But Captain Linda's not ready to play ball. That's no good, Scotty. We get a shout later. I'm sorry about that, or... Alrighty, that's the game plan. Yeah, she wants to fish by herself, you know? She doesn't want a boat fishing alongside of her. The bottom line is, I want to do what's best for my crew and myself, and that means putting fish on the boat. I gotta get going, pressure's on now. In past seasons, Scotty's gone out of his way to help out the other captain. But this season, it's looking like every man for himself. Yeah, I guess so, all the other boats are out. We got all the good spots covered. We'll just pick a spot, go to the outside boat, fish alongside somebody, I guess. More hooks, more competition. I would have preferred one of the berths on the corner, but that's just not gonna happen. With chompers behind him and Linda covering the best spot ahead, Captain Scotty has no choice but to throw the line and take his chances. Boys, ready? Let her go. Keep her! Fishing grounds are really crowded this year. I've been out here straight for the last seven years. This is the most boats I've seen out here in seven years. Tires setting around. We gotta catch the fish, make some money. It's been one of them real, real, real tough years on the banks this year. It's been slow this year. Just gotta keep hoping every day is different. We need some major changes. Feeling good. Hannah Bowden's uh, back in the game. I feel like today was just rewards for staying out during the hurricane, and that enabled us to get back here and get the spot we wanted. Right now we make the money. Everybody's happy. We're catching face. Eagle Eye Two. We are number one. Always be number one. Uh, she won't beat us. She haven't got it in her. No way. Now, if she beats us this year, then I'm done. I'm all finished sword fishing. Okay. We're getting ready to cut it off. Get a few hours of sleep. Get up early in the morning tomorrow around 4. Get on it. Hopefully it's loaded with fish. We'll see what's happening here. Water's really messed up, so I don't, I don't really know what to expect for tomorrow. On the crowded grounds of the Grand Banks, Every captain has staked their claim. And when the hooks come up, they'll find out who's on the money and who's out of luck. May the swordfish gods be with us. 1,200 miles south on George's Banks. Guys, we're going to get a couple coffees, smoke a butt, put your slickers on. We're going to rank it up, just trying to catch fish, you know, trying to put a big kid of fish on the boat. Captain Slick is hoping to put this morning's bad luck behind him. Let's see what happens. We're starting to all back. Our tests are set. Slick's not in a great mood. There's no letting your guard down on this road. Come on, fish! first hooks of the day come up empty. But the next hook brings more than Lemmy can handle.
300 miles off the New Jersey coast is the Francis Ann. Something on there, Lem. <laughs> what happened, Lem? Shark or something on a leader. It was all the black. I went to grab out a pan. Fish took off. Ripped the leader. Snap got caught on my finger like that. Pulled the opposite way. Doesn't feel particularly wonderful. Whatever. I can't do anything right now. Gonna pass out some tampons later aboard the bow of the boat. I don't know what it is yet. It's big, whatever it is. Big and heavy. Big. The big eye tuna could mean big dollars. But pulling up the hundred pound fish will put Lemmy's busted hand to the test. Yeah, somebody else has got to pull today. I can't do it. I can't pull right now. My hand's off. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I would have just yeah, got in, but I can't. Come on, come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah, nice, big. That is a beautiful fish. That's like a hundred pounds. That right there, nice and easy. Probably a thousand dollar, if not better, fish right there. Yeah, that is beautiful. Big money. Big money. It's getting worse as we go. The big guy could be worth more than a thousand dollars. But the cash in his pocket, a small consolation to Lemmy. This is ugly. Twelve hundred miles north on the Grand Banks. The rest of the fleet gambled more than fifty thousand dollars worth of gear, hoping to find the fish in the hurricane-ravaged water. All hands on rail. Desperate to pull a profit, Captain Chomps blew off Scotty and set out on his own in dangerously crowded waters. Shark! Get hammered down by the dogs. Sure got some sharks today. The blue sharks have no commercial value. They're a bad sign that Chomps picked water that's too cold. Worried about no Makos, I ain't worried about nothing but repairing this leader. We'll be all about repairing all this leader all day long. Gosh, so we need some heavy fish. Small Mako. boat's only grappling hook and 40 feet of cable are headed straight to the bottom of the ocean. That hook you see us throw every morning, it's gone bye-bye. It rolled off the boat and sunk. That grapple is really important to us because you can't really just walk up to your gear and, and pick it up. I'm going to have to make one out of some, some gas or something. I don't know. I think it's wood. Tell him every Thing and he can't do nothing. He can't remember past 10 minutes. Pain in the ass. Well, stop f***ing pulling on me, Chris. Idiot. Running around like a dumbass. Bye-bye, Graffle. And to make matters worse. Oh, Bastards. I know I felt something, but that's what I felt. Setting carelessly in the crowded grounds, Chomp's gear got tangled 
snapping the main line and leaving more than 20 miles of gear adrift at sea. What was the last sat, you know? 704. 704. First part off today. Now we got a part off. But losing more gear would bury chompers thousands and thousands of dollars deeper in the hole. I can't afford to miss like days because it's stupid. That's stupid. Sixty miles southwest. Captain Scotty Verbinowitz isn't having much better luck. Shark! Thought we're gonna start off real good there that time. We've only got a couple of pups this section. Uh, if it doesn't pick up here, we're probably not gonna get our couple thousand pounds that I hope for. With Chomps crowding into the south and Linda fishing his sweet spot to the north, Captain Scotty had no choice but to gamble on untested water. We hope we don't have any bad sets, but never been on a trip that didn't have a bad set, so we'll see when it comes. But. Very, very young. This 20-pound pup is well below the legal limit. He's alive. Catch him next year when he's like 60, 70 pounds. The crew is careful to release these undersized fish. The farmer has to replant to get a crop. We have to keep the fish population in check by uh, live releases, uh, size limits, kind of look after the ocean as best we can. But after more bad fishing, it's clear that Captain Scotty can't escape the mess that Hurricane Igor left behind. It's just a joke here. Just a couple of small fish and lots of sharks. Right now, fishing sucks. Yeah, things have definitely changed. Definitely not what I expected, that's for sure. Fifty miles west. It's a different story on the deck of the Hannah Bowden. Woo! Good job, Johnny. Nice fish. Woo! Bam, bam. Slamming them. Fish on. Linda's decision not to share her spot with Scotty kept her on the fish and her crew in the money. I can't think of anybody else, uh, you know, more professional in their attitude towards fishing. You know, I think she uh, wakes up in the morning and thinks about fishing, thinks about fishing when she's going to bed. People say, you know, Linda back is Linda back, but I'm questioning did she ever leave? Look at this. She's right back on him. Things could still go very wrong, but right now, things are feeling very right. save on gear that rocks. Get deals on must-haves for your next adventure, or feng shui for less. Microsoft Edge's built-in browser features find you deals. Find coupons from across the web. Compare prices from other retailers. Or let AI tools help you make the best purchase decision. How will you shop and save with Edge? Three hundred miles off the coast of Newfoundland, the big eye is on the hunt for their missing gear. Go on. I think everybody's kind of questioning whether they made the right choice right now and came out here. After Chomp set his gear in crowded grounds, the main line tangled and snapped. To make matters worse, their only grappling hook went overboard. 
Is that the gravel bucket? And 300 miles east of the nearest hardware store, the only way to get a new grapple is to build one. I need somebody to go in there to get some hooks out. Hooks? Yeah, like gas hooks. Yeah, I'm rigging something up here. These two grappling hooks are made out of a gaff hook and two wrenches for the weight. You need some weight so you can chunk it far. Finally, Captain Chomps tracks down his gear. It's time to see if Woody's homemade grapple works. <laughs> Your grappling hook is great. It's like brand new grapple now. With the main line repaired, the big eye's ready to see if the set has anything to offer. Got fish on, fish on here. First start of the day. Captain Chomp's second swordfish of the day is a 450-pound quadruple marker and could be a sign of bigger fish to come. That fish is probably worth about two grand. That probably just made our day right there. That's a big fish. Two hooks later. Everybody get the gas. Everybody on the whole boat, run over here and get gas. Hey, everybody, run, run, run. Beautiful. Finally, the crew are on the fish, and they're massive. Things are looking better. Things are starting to turn around pretty good. As the final beeper comes up, the little southern boat has pulled aboard 1,800 pounds. Couple fish, a little bit better than nothing, I guess. About $3,000 worth of product on the deck of the big eye. Captain Chomper's maverick style is finally paying off. But still $30,000 in the hole, he's in no mood to celebrate. I'm not feeling real good about anything for this stupid ass that we're going through. Or you're going to have one lame ass season. Yeah, even when uh, you're catching fish, there's still a bunch of drama. It's definitely been the most discouraging season that I've had yet, and uh, it still hasn't paid off. Sixty miles southwest, the Eagle Eye 2 is hauling in their last section of the day and looking for a late rally of their own. It's not the way we wound up to start our second trip at all. Very slow day today. Got some weight on the line here. Big fish here right now. We don't know what it is yet. Almost feels like a a bluefin, dead weight. Maybe it's a nice big sword, too. You never know. A fish this heavy can snap the quarter-inch thick main line. Scotty makes the call to transfer it to one of the 1,000-pound test live lines. There we go. <laughs> now, it's up to veteran longliner Tommy Fox to pull the monster up by hand. Oh, we're fighting the big fish here right now, but it sure does have some weight and some strength. I don't see the fish. I have no idea what the f it is. It's staying right under the boat.
300 miles off the coast of Newfoundland is the Eagle Eye 2. Scotty and his veteran crew have been hauling for four hours with nothing to show for it. What is it? But now, with something heavy fighting on the live line, Scotty and the crew are hoping to make up for a morning of bad fishing. Uh, here it comes, whatever it is. Oh, it's a big tiger shark. Just cut him, 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 cut him. Too risky to pull aboard. The monster 12-foot tiger shark is cut free. That's, that's disappointing. It's frustrating. I like to find out what those big fish are. But, hey, whatever. It's part of the game. It's about a... 800-pound tiger shark, I'd say. It's a bit disappointing. All that for nothing. My arms are burning. Ended up to be a, a pesky old tiger shark. We just caught it. Rather than taking a chance, get somebody wrapped up in a leader and get ripped overboard or something like that, just cut him as quick as we can and let him go. I mean, that fish was probably 800 pounds or so. It was a real big one. We don't need anybody going for a swim. After getting squeezed out of their sweet spot and striking out on the first set of the trip, the crew of the Eagle Eye 2 is feeling the heat. I know we're going to do good. We'll scrape up a nice trip this time. Praise God. You'll see. After a rough start to his second trip, Scotty's still stuck at 15,000 pounds. Linda's bold moves have helped close the gap. But the Francis Ann is still holding on to the top spot. Three hundred miles off the coast of New Jersey. I have no, not much of a knuckle for a ring finger right now. Inside of my hands, all bruised. Can't make a fist. As much as I can move my finger in, it's right there. It hurts, man. But I don't say anything to him, because then I'll just get made fun of. I'll worry about it later. Oh, man. They're back on the hauler, hoping some money fish will turn their luck around. Fish on! Swordfish! Swordfish! Grab a gaff cutter. But with Lemmy out of commission, the pressure is on Greenhorn Butters to pick up the slack. Oh boy, Butters is in control. We lost it. Yeah. 80 pound sword. Sword though. Pop, nice swordfish. Not bad. Best one of the day so far. Finally, the last of the gear comes up. Last beeper. Three fish for $2,000. And for the Francis Ann, one of the worst hauls of the season. By the end of the day, Lemmy's hand is so swollen, it's a struggle to pack fish. Picked up a 60 pound fish with one hand. I don't care. This one's gonna be a little more difficult with one hand. Fishing a man down is not an option, which leaves Slick with no choice. Number 12 is a wrap. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, men, but guess what? We're going home. Did he just say we're going home? I don't home? believe just, him. I don't believe, I don't believe him. him. Huh? I do not believe him. Absolutely not. Wrap. Lemmy's hand injury, we didn't think it was as severe as it was. I think it broke his finger. I don't know if it broke one of them or both of them. But his hand's down. Sending an injured guy out on the boat if his hand gets worse, infection, whatever. We don't need a bigger problem than we got. Even with the disasters of the last few days, the crew of the Francis Ann will be going home with 16,000 pounds of fish. Last fish going in the hole. Last fish of the trip. Here we go. Not much, but yes. it's something. Here you go, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't believe we're not sat again. I'm really surprised. I am pretty shocked, actually, that we're not setting it out again. 252 miles to go. About 36-hour ride, weather permits. Go in, regroup, start all over again.